it was just non-stop fighting growing up so when people say where does the violence start from then it's just it was just part of that lifestyle growing up normal is the comfort cushion right, so wherever you're programmed to accept as normal is what you'd find comfortable fighting just became that social act of acceptance everybody accepted it as normal it was just the two kids had a problem then they had a fight violence is just normality to me it's kind of sad to say but it's like it's the easiest answer solution and avenue for anything a consistent exposure to violence aggression it's just been programmed into my brain as normality right? because in my house I can't say there was alcoholics but there was a lot of drink there was a lot of drugs and there was a lot of violence if a dispute got too bad then the parents would make the kids fight so no matter what happened would have a fight <laughs> and if you weren't if you never had a fight even your dad used to give you a slap for not having the fight so the programming that was instilled into us growing up was just limbic part of our brains egotistical parts of drives and the parents you know it's just nuts like that was our normal and it was the whole environment it wasn't just me I've done some bad things and I, I, I can't ever be proud of anything I've done. I'm not glad I've done anything I've done in the past. It, it moulded the man I've become today, but I was never proud of what I went through. Now, realistically, I can actually blame the limbic part of my brain because I don't agree with my limbic part of my brain. I never did back then, but I never knew how to manage it. Do you understand? So it's not that I'm remorseful about the weakness that I had to control my limbic part of my brain and the ignorance not to grow, you know? And I believed in the ignorance. I, pro I believe, like, from young, eight, nine, 10 years of age, I was telling myself, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be that. I don't wanna be nothing else. And even going through school, I was going to see psychologists in school. And one of the psychologists just said to me, there's no help in you. I said, what it is you don't understand, and I know you're here doing your job, and this is me, as I weren't even 16 when I started, I can't remember how old I was, but I weren't even 16, because I was still in the school um, education system, right? I said, what you've got to understand is, I want to go to prison. I want to be a cat A. I want to get shot, and I am going to rob security vans and banks. And that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna rob, steal, and do everything I can to be the most biggest criminal in London. And I used to tell that to the psychologist because that's something that I sort of told myself that I'm gonna become, and I believed it. So all the way through my adolescent years, I didn't want to do anything else, and I enjoyed the journey, you know? And when I went to prison, I was just playing a part. I wanted to be something, and I played that part hook, line and sinker, and I was prepared to take all the consequences on the chin, because that was what I chose to do, and that's why I was that guy. I understand why people said I was insane, because I was insane. Like, in my, <laughs> in my own head, right, I had to have a, in my head, right, don't matter. I'm gonna to have to have a fight every single day. I'm gonna to have to get. I'm gonna to have to get beaten up every day, and they're gonna to have to beat me up every day to a point where I can't move. So every day I want to fight. So every day I'd come on the landing and fight with screws, fight with inmates to the point where they'd say, "Look, what's the point? Why? Take me down the block. Take me down the block." And then I'd smash my. A lot of my, I wouldn't. I'd never smashed my cell up, but I'd smash the door until they opened the door, and then they'd tear into the, the, the officers, and end up down the block. And it got to a point where, when I was in prison, I just got left alone, and that was it. I've gone past that having to prove everything to everyone. I've gone past that having to stand up against everybody, standing up for everyone, like. I've got to the point in my life now where I've realised that my limbic part of my system, which I refer to as the chimp, 
has just kept me in bother all the time. So now I'm fed up of being in bother. I'm fed up of being in prison. I'm fed up of being in hospital. I'm fed up of going through that same rigmarole, the scenarios, the headaches, the dramas, the prisons, the police, the hospitals. And you get to a point where nothing's worth that no more. One, you've experienced a certain way of life, you wouldn't wish it on anyone. And you just, you just don't do it. You know, and if you've got the ability to feed someone or help someone that's broken or starving, then that's your obligation. And that's what I believe kept me alive when I got shot.